unfortunate thing to happen to anybody is to come in at the top in politics. It's like being a, a hockey star. Tonight you scored a goal and you're a hero, and tomorrow you let a goal in and you're a bum. And that's politics. Will you be running for the leadership, do you think? Uh, let's leave it uh, where we are for the moment. So you're not saying no, but you're not saying yes. I'm not saying anything. I have been on a crusade since 1963 to restore the independence of a member of parliament. It's not a trade deal. It's the Sale of Canada Act. On big issues, Trudeau and I were together. That's it. John Napier Turner becomes Prime Minister. Country. Never, 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 never. I've had the good fortune of reading a lot of the great Catholic theologians. St. Augustine had a phrase that I always remembered. He to whom God has given some talent has a duty to share it. In other words, give something back in life. So that has been my motivation. If you're lucky enough to have some talent, have some advantages in life, you have a duty, certainly under a free society, to share it with your fellow citizens. And uh, that meant for me either entering the priesthood, which I contemplated at one time, or going into public life, which I did uh, at a fairly young age. This is John Turner, the Liberal MP for St. Lawrence St. George in Montreal, and a minister without portfolio in the Pearson cabinet. He is 37 years old, was a Rhodes Scholar, Olympics contender, has been admitted to the bar in London, as well as British Columbia and Quebec. And in his articulate, handsome way, has been making an impressive impact on the young voters. It's a question of pride, and you want to be proud to be a Canadian. In terms of human wealth of our everyday living, we can compete with the world. And I think that's what our generation has got to do. He is due for a cabinet promotion and is definitely a contender for the Liberal leadership. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and my fellow Liberals, if you cast your vote for me tomorrow, you will be choosing a candidate that believes in nationalism, who will lead liberals on to greater heights and a new victory in the next general election. And we should never forget that. I hadn't planned to go into politics. my sister and I grew up, we began to know just what a formidable woman our mother was. She went to the University of British Columbia. And when she was at the London School of Economics, she met my father, who was a gunsmith. But my father died at uh, 29 years old. So my mother came back to British Columbia, back to Rossland, and she applied for a job in 1934 as chief economist of the tariff board. She got the job, brought us to, to Ottawa.
And then the war came, and uh, she uh, became the vice chairman of the Wartime Prices and Trade Board. We still have that photograph uh, at home, framed, and it was a great photograph of her in McLean's, the cover of McLean's. McLean's was featuring her as one of the outstanding women in the country and the, the leading woman in the Canadian public service. So my mother was the senior woman in the public service of Canada, and uh, knew all uh, the ministers, knew the prime minister well. And I had a pretty good apprenticeship as her son in Ottawa during those early days. In Vancouver, when my mother remarried, we went back in 1945, and I happened to be going to university. I went in as a freshman at the University of British Columbia. And of course, this was the first, first post-war year. I was a sports editor of the, uh, the, the student paper called the UBC. I was on student council in my final year as coordinator of student activities. And also, uh, the first couple of years, I swam for the university, and then a track and field guy saw me run one time and got me into track and field, so I was the captain of the track and field team. During 47 and 48, I guess I was the fastest guy in the country. The best race I ever ran, I was down in the Los Angeles Coliseum before 100,000 people against Mel Patman, who later won the Olympics that year in the 100 meters. Uh, Mel Patman lowered the world record in the 100 yards in that race from 9.4 seconds to 9.3. I finished fourth in 9.6. Um, I didn't get to the Olympics because I got in an, an automobile accident and, and hurt my knee being just before. I was very disappointed. That was one of my challenges. But that's what happens in life. Sometimes you're lucky and you win. Sometimes you're, un you're unlucky and you lose. It doesn't mean you don't get to the starting gate. 